Morning Coffee is back. <laughs> What is up, everyone? Thank you all so very much for tuning in. Welcome back to Morning Coffee. Yes. So, it's been a minute, um, and we're going to do a little bit of story time before we get into today's cards, um, because I just want to explain a little bit of what's been happening over the last three months. Um, and while I do that, I'm going to work on getting some sage going. But, hello everyone. Welcome back to Morning Coffee. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Happy Thursday. It is Thursday, April 1st. April Fool's Day. <laughs> but don't worry, this is not an April Fool's joke. In reality, the real April Fool's joke, at which the universe got me too, but the real uh, 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 April Fool's joke was the fact that Morning Coffee was done, was never coming back to YouTube. So I want to talk a little bit about that, um, if I can get my stage going. Anyway, uh, so when I decided to take Morning Coffee off of YouTube, I was going through a period in which I was really trying to identify who it is I, I'm supposed to be, who it is I'm meant to be, what it is I'm aligning with here on, um, on YouTube, but also as a reader in, in, as a whole. And during the time that Morning Coffee was taken off of YouTube, I was in a phase of um, feeling undervalued, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I, 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 and it had a lot to do with my ego. Um, and over the last three months, like over the winter season and even some of the fall season, um, I was needing a break. Um, I needed some time to myself, even though I didn't want to disappear completely, obviously, because I wanted to be here for the collective in any way that I could, but I could not, I couldn't do it under the circumstances in which that I was doing it before. And like I said, I was feeling very undervalued and it's very similar to some things that some other readers have gone through um, that I've watched, you know, over my three years of being here as a reader, uh, three plus years now. Um, January 8th was the three-year anniversary of Divine Conversations. Um, and it had a lot to do with ego. And over the last three months, over the winter seasons, I want to say, winter season, I want to say, uh, I was going through a big, big ego death. If you guys have been following on Patreon, over the last, like, two weeks, we've been talking about that. Um, and that ego death has to do... Uh, I've been, well, I've been calling it an ego death um, because that's what it's felt like for me. But a lot of us have been going through this period right now of really trying to basically re-identify ourselves and figure out who it is we are, what it is we're doing. Um, a big collective thing was really separating from a lot of that strong, overly driven masculine energy. Um, and as you know, for those of you that have been following me for long enough, you know that uh, I really work on, as a reader, as an energy healer, and as, a, as, a, as an empath, I work on balancing the masculine with the feminine. Um, and this even goes back as far as to when I moved here to Puerto Rico. For those of you that are new, hi, I'm Eric. Um, I live in Puerto Rico now. I'm from the United States. Born on Long Island, raised in New York, lived in Brooklyn right before I moved here. And when I moved here, um, there was a big collective shift in terms of the divine feminine and the divine masculine energies. Uh, for those of you also that don't know, I started as a, as a twin flame reader. And I'm still kind of a twin flame reader, but I do all of that over on Patreon now. Um, but there was a big collective shift between the masculine and the feminine energies. And the feminine, many of us that are on the feminine side, really sunk into that energy of preserving ourselves, not really um, catering to the typical feminine aspects or what we, I guess, could really be considered twisted and, and toxic feminine aspects of overly giving and overly trying and trying to heal the masculine and holding space for the masculine and all that kind of stuff, right? Well, when I moved here, there was that big shift and that shift helped me get into a place where I was really starting to figure out 
and try to align with the best way for me to be available here. And it felt like, after a while, it felt like morning doing the daily readings here wasn't something about it didn't feel right. So I needed to go away for a while. I didn't stop. I was doing your morning coffee on Patreon and that was great for a while. But as I started to go through it, I was really starting to feel like I missed having this time for us as a collective to come together and just talk about the energies and, and figure out what's going on, right? But I chalked that up to like, well, don't worry about it, Eric. You've been doing that for like two years now. You know, just give yourself some time. You'll get over it. But I didn't. And it got to the point where um, mid-March, I was like, I, it, it just kept coming up. You know, it kept coming up into my head. And so finally I resolved to really sit down with myself and think about it. And I was like, well, what about it do I miss so much? Well, first of all, I missed the community. And it's not like we didn't have a community. It's not like we don't have a community over on Patreon. And it's a beautiful community. I love it. It's such a, if, if any of you have not made it to Patreon yet and you're thinking about it or you're new to me and you're thinking maybe I want to check out his Patreon, go ahead and check it out because we have a lot of fun there. But it still got to the point where it's like I still missed connecting with everybody. All the people that, <clears throat> you know, normally I would connect with and we would connect as a community here, I missed that. But then on top of that, it got to the point where I was able to start to understand the value of having this time together, especially now in this day, uh, in this period of societal evolution, I came to the understanding that regardless as to, regardless of whatever I would get monetarily from doing this, the desire to be in this position and be able to communicate with large amounts of people in this way oh, outweighed the fact that on an egoic level, I felt like I wasn't getting back what I felt I should. But again, that was all ego. And so I've decided that, you know, while it's great to, to, make, some, to make yourself somewhat exclusive, yes, technically that makes sense. And from the strong, the, the extreme drive of you know, success and results and accolades and monetary compensation and all that, which is part of that extreme masculine drive, it's still, there is still more value in being able to provide something like this for people who need it, especially now. And part of me even got to the place where I started to understand how cruel it was to say, okay, we had this time before, but now I'm ripping away, we're ripping it away from you and now you have to pay for it. Like, Mm. You know what I mean? So, I decided to bring morning coffee back. Yay. Now, speaking of this, like, ego death that we had, we had been talking about over the last few weeks over on Patreon, for me, it represented itself in ways of not pushing myself to do the things that I felt like I needed to do because those, I came to the realization that those things that I felt I needed to do or those ways that I had, I had identified myself as, that was just coming from conditioning. That, I mean, take it, for example, I used to be a dancer. I'm still a great dancer, but that doesn't, but being in that world doesn't resonate with me any longer. At one point I wanted to be a musician and a recording artist and I still love doing that, but that really doesn't resonate with, with me any, anymore either. And all the ways that I was trying to push myself to be something was coming from a place of conditioning, was coming from a place of, uh, of the ways that I had identified myself in the past that, again, don't really resonate with me any longer. So it's it's getting I like it got to a point where like I just didn't want to do anything like the month of March was really difficult for me because I was very tired I felt very drained and I didn't I didn't want to do all of the things that I normally thought I would have or the way all of the things that I would have pushed myself towards in the past so and, and that even got it even got to a point where like my ego was so wrapped up in 
validation in terms of being a reader and being here on YouTube that I was looking at all these other individuals who were readers too, who were seemingly doing some of the same things that I was doing and yet I wasn't getting the same results. Like it was really upsetting me for a while and I had to pull away from it and I had to get my ego in check and, and remember what the real point of this is. It's not to be famous. It's not to make a shit ton of money. It's not to be, it's not to have the most subscribers on YouTube. It's not to have the most views on YouTube. It's not to make, get the most mo monetization from my videos. It's, it's, what's important is providing a space where we can all come together and feel safe and talk about what's going on and understand or tr at least try to figure out what's going on energetically so that we can ride this wave of ascension together and uh, keep in mind this ascension journey never ends even when you leave this physical body and you move on to the next stage in existence your ascension process is going to continue it does not stop until your soul gets to the point where it is now ready to reintegrate back into source and what's the goal of all of this well really when you think about it, it, it when you boil you boil it down it's really just a way that source god creator the universe whatever you want to call it Existence and life is a way for source to learn about itself, to experience itself. And it's a, this is an ongoing thing. It has no ending and it has no beginning. It just is. So what's so I'm I'm in the position now of understanding and feeling good about the fact that I'm here to talk. I'm here to explain. I'm here to tell my story, my version of the story, so that you guys have a framework where you can start to understand your story. And one of the biggest things that helped pull me back was all of the different ways that I, the universe was showing me just how important morning coffee is to you guys, is to all of us. I mean, morning coffee has been the most viewed series on my channel since day one, since, since I started it, okay? So, it did at one point it, I, I I sat down with myself and I was like, Eric, this is cruel. I mean, if anybody, need, if, if, if there was ever a time for us to have this type of, what, this type of experience, this type of community, this type of show, this type of, of, you know, daily thing to watch, now would be it because there is so much that is changing in human society right now. So welcome back to Morning Coffee, kids. <laughs> I am so very happy to be back. Um, so because today is the first of the month, you can expect monthly readings. So for those of you over on Patreon, your love readings should be up by now, actually, by the time this video is posted to YouTube. Uh, for those of us on YouTube that are looking for or waiting for the general monthly readings, those will be up today by about 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes? Oh boy, kids. All right, so let's get into this here and let's see what we've got for the collective today. We are using, our, for our main deck, we're using the Tarot Mucha here. And then we're getting clarification from the Los Carabello deck. And for those of you that have been paying attention and have been watching, yes, I finally got this out of my car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then we're gonna get some Oracle guidance from somewhere. Um, the Lenormand deck just caught my eye. Huh. We'll see. Let's get into this and see what we've got for today. Here we go. Oh, also keep in mind that this is still a general reading and it's still a timeless reading, okay? So yes, it's April 1st, but this can resonate for you at any time, right? Here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the hi their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of the situations, situationships, places, and circumstances in which we all need it the most.
Thank you so very much, Spirit. Oh my God, you guys, this is so exciting. All right, here we go. So we're going to get into this. I'm going to give this uh, five shovels. One. Four. The collective here. This is two. This is three. Para el colectivo. Para la gente. This is four. Yes, I'm still learning, working on learning Spanish. <laughs> I will admit that I took, I took a while off from that. And this is five. Um, I went through a period in my adjustments, my adjustment period of being here where <laughs> I'm not going to lie, you guys, this is five. I, at one point, I was like, get me the fuck out of here. I've had enough. I'm done. I'm. I want. I want to go home. But. But I've since. I've since like balanced out since then, and I'm really settling in. And to be honest with you, with everything that's going on in the world right now, I would much rather much rather be here. Than back in the states. But we can talk about that at another time. Um, but I went through a period where I was I was really gung ho about learning Spanish. You know, and I was really pushing myself. I was, I was overdoing it. I was pushing myself too hard and I was putting too much pressure on myself. And, and then I, I was just like, fuck this. I'm not doing this anymore. And so I took like a few months off, but I'm still working on it. You guys don't worry. And I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. All right, let's get into this kids. What do we got going on for today? What's going on for the collective today? What do we want to talk about, kids? Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Well, we have a number of cards in reverse. Oh, shit. All right. Well, we're starting off with a bang today, kids. Uh, uh, overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the Five of Swords. Um, and we have a number of cards that have fallen reversed and face down. But the only card that has fallen face up and is upright, it is the Six of Cups. So either we're talking about the past, okay, in terms of memories here. Uh, I am picking up this could have to do with childhood here. Or maybe your children, if you have children. Um, this also could deal with a soulmate relationship. But there's something, there's a strong, okay, I just heard there's a strong ego battle happening. What do we have? What do we have? Okay. Yes, there is a strong ego, ego battle here um, that's going on. And what's happening is your ego is, is keeping your focus here on the past. Uh, please excuse the manicure. <laughs> um, but what I feel like is happening here is your ego has got you stuck on the past. Six of Cups. And it's quite destructive. Oof. Five of Swords and the Three of Swords. Ace of Swords is at the bottom. All of this is at the bottom of the deck here. The thing, the thing that's really concerning me in this situation, especially now that the Ace of Swords has come out, um, what this is kind of telling me is that you are aware or somebody here is aware of the heartbreak, of the battle, of the strife, of the lose-lose energy. This very well could be twin flame energy, okay? But someone is aware of the struggle. Someone is aware of the heartbreak. Someone is aware of how destructive the situation is ultimately and yet it feels like they don't want to let go you have the ten of wands in reverse you have the page of swords in reverse you have the fool in reverse and you have the empress in reverse and it's the empress here that could be really speaking to the potentiality of this being a twin flame energy um, what if this is a twin flame situation for you what this feels like is the feminine not letting go still still being overburdened overburdened like like whoa okay but what's but to me what this is saying is you're overburdened and you know it and yet for some reason you don't want to let go you don't want to move on you don't want to take a leap of faith i just heard the marriage is possible here okay that could be what's catching you here empress in reverse there is an energy of overgiving here giving too much of the benefit of the doubt. 
And then the Page of Swords in reverse is you watching, kind of stalking. Um, and even though, okay, I just heard the marriage is possible here, but under what circumstances do you, under which circumstances would you want to end up being in a committed relationship? Let's just say it's a committed relationship, not a marriage. Let's just say, under what cir which circumstances would you want to be in a committed relationship with someone? Would you want to be, would you want it to be equal, balanced, reciprocal, or do you want it to be one-sided? Because, I mean, you could get into a relationship with someone that in which it's a one-sided situation, but how do you think that's going to turn out? I'm hearing you're giving too much of the benefit of the doubt here. Okay. Uh, I'm hearing let's get one more pull from this deck, and then we'll move on to going deeper with some clarification. So let's continue this story. Uh, okay, okay, okay. They're saying that's enough. Now we do have the EFC. We have the Eight of Cups at the bottom of the deck now. It's necessary to walk away from this. It's necessary to walk away from this. Be why? Because this individual, represented by the masculine now, we have the Knight of Cups, we have the King of Pentacles. Both are in reverse. We have the Five of Wands in reverse, and now we have the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. So we're talking about a soulmate relationship. This could be Twin Flamish. It doesn't have to be. Ultimately, it feels like the Empress here represents an energy of someone overgiving someone giving too much to the situation and not receiving anything if at all in return this person is wrapped up in what everybody's going to say five of wands in reverse they're not willing to give you an offer they're not willing to and I, and this is not personal okay because what i'm feeling from this situation is that this person is not really willing to give anything to anybody this person is the, they are not emotionally available knight of cups and when they do give something of their heart, uh, I hate to say this, but what I just heard was it's not for any purposes other than to serve their own needs. It feels like this person is actually quite good on their own. King of Pentacles in reverse. I mean, sure, the King of Pentacles is in reverse here and them being good on their own is self-sufficient in a toxic way. Okay, that's fine. Um, well, I mean, it's not fine, but like, okay. But this person is not open. This person is not open. And with this Ace of Pentacles in reverse here, I kind of feel like while this it says that this person is not willing to give anything, it's also saying to me, you don't need to be giving anything to this person either because you're not going to give anything back. This person is in a place where they're just taking. They're needy. They're greedy. They're just taking for themselves. And sure... I, and some of you are picking up on the fact that they are having an internal battle about this. And that's what's keeping the window of opportunity open for you. But no. See, no. That's the Empress in reverse here. You're giving too much of the benefit of the doubt, okay? If you're going to be in this energy of unconditional, of unconditional love and acceptance, you need to also hold that for yourself which means that you don't need to be giving of yourself to a situation that's not reciprocal, to someone that's just gonna keep giving and giving and giving. And now what I'm, oh, I'm sorry, taking and taking and taking. And now what I'm getting from the Knight of Cups in reverse is that sure, they may show you in, in some ways how you know they may be open to it or they may be receptive to it. But again, that's just to serve their own, their own needs, their own desires. The Knight of Cups in reverse can represent an individual who was in something just for their own emotional fulfillment and nothing else, okay? Now, I, also, I am also picking up on the fact that for some of you, you are aware of maybe how broken this person may be. And I say that, I, I, don't, I don't mean any, any offense by that or anything. Um, but again, you're giving too much of the benefit of the doubt. You're looking at a situation and seeing the potential and how, you know, you could help and you could heal. But quite frankly, there again is the Empress energy in reverse. It is not your replace. It is not your responsibility. It is not your responsibility to heal someone else. So it's time to walk away from this. It's time to do what 
the right thing to do. What is the right thing to do? King of Cups. Recognize that someone is not emotionally available and recognize that you deserve better. You deserve to be a part of a situation that is reciprocal. And while you may have feelings for this individual, and in no way is that a bad thing, and in no way should that be denied, okay? But what also shouldn't be denied is the fact that your resources are being depleted here, and you deserve the chance for something better. The sun, okay? So doing the right thing means taking your energies elsewhere when you know it's not being reciprocated, okay? Okay. Let's go a little bit deeper. Um, so actually, first thing I want to look at is the Six of Cups energy. Five shuffles, one. Because I'm looking at the Six of Cups right here, and I'm thinking this has to do with like a, a contract of some sort. This is two. Um, I will say that it definitely does feel like this is very much an energy or a situation that is necessary. Something just jumped out. Ooh, eight of swords. So you're feeling trapped in this situation. This is three. It's almost as if you're feeling like there is an obligation that you need to fill in terms of leading this person in the right direction. This is four. But I will say that the best way for you to do that is to hold your head up high and to hold your integrity and not accept anything other than what you know you deserve in this situation. So not letting Empress in reverse, not letting someone just get away with things, not letting things slide because, oh, well, they're damaged or, oh, well, they've been through this, that, and the third. Like, it's not... You're not in a place of lack of compassion for recognizing that someone is hurt or someone is damaged, but still holding your boundaries and saying, okay, I recognize that you're hurt and you're damaged and you could use the help, but I'm not going to go out of my way to do it because ultimately it is your responsibility to work on healing yourself. If you need the help, yes, I will be here to help you should you come here to ask for it, but I am not going to put myself on the line and give knowing you're just going to take and not re give anything back. This is five. I have to pause for a second because now my nose is acting up. Hold on a second, guys. Okay, that's better for now. Let's start with the Six of Cups. Yes? So, what is this Six of Cups energy here? Mm-hmm. Okay. So what's happening here? Excellent. Excellent, excellent. All right. So what's happening here is, yes, this is a soul contract. This is a situation in which it was, I guess you could say it, it was destined to be, like it was destined for you to, to, to face this situation. Maybe not necessarily with this person. I mean, I feel like the individuals that actually play out the contract with us can sometimes be interchangeable. But what's important right now is the basics of this situation. Like, what? It, it, forget the actual person. Look at energetically what is happening here. And there is a blockage here. Eight of Wands. You can't go any further. The door is closed. But why is the door closed? Well, at the bottom of the deck, you do have the Four of Swords followed by the moon to the eight of pentacles. Lots of eights here to the eight of pentacles because you have the eight of wands here. You have the eight of cups here. And now you have the eight of pentacles here followed by the hanged man. Okay, stop and think about it for a second. And instead of looking at this from an external point of view, use your intuition. What does your intuition say about this? What work can be done? What craftsmanship can be can be facilitated in this situation? What's the change in perspective that you can gain from this situation? Well, let's break it down. Effectively, the door is closed. Not because you did anything wrong, but because the situation is blocked. Why is the situation blocked? Well, 
you've got somebody that's overtaking and you've got somebody that's over giving. So for the person that's over giving here, this situation, this soulmate situation, this soul contract situation is helping you to find a greater representation of what's really going on within you, the hermit. And effectively bringing justice into your life, bringing balance, bringing harmony. I want to say in some cases it's bringing egoic harmony. And by that, what it feels like spirit is saying here, or what it feels like spirit means with the egoic harmony is bringing your ego into balance with your soul. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So, okay, so we've identified one of the main reasons for this soul contract being playing out right now. Let's talk about the Empress in Reverse. Because the Empress in Reverse is, coupl is, is, is coupled with the Fool in Reverse and the Ten of Wands in Reverse. Also the Page of Swords in Reverse, but we don't really have to talk about that because that's just talking about stalking. Anyway, um, for lack of a better term, I should say. But uh, the Empress here, the individual that's in this Empress energy, and actually, this doesn't even need to be twin flame or romantic. This could actually be a mother, the Empress in reverse, who's dealing with something with their actual child, the Six of Cups. That just hit me. And I understand where you're coming from here because it definitely does feel like with this Ten of Wands energy in reverse, you feel overburdened and yet you feel a sense of responsibility for this. Now, if you are a parent or a mother, we should say, part of you is feeling responsible for this because part of you actually may be in an energy of, well, I helped to create. Okay, I'm just going to say it for lack of a better term, I, I helped to create this monster. I've got to do something about this. Okay, all right, to a certain extent, but also the individual that is represented here in the Six of Cups, maybe your child or whomever, whatever, they also have a, represent, a, a responsibility to figure themselves out as well. You as a parent can only do so much, okay? At some point, especially when the child goes and like moves out and starts doing their own thing, it's there, it's now upon them to figure out what's going on within them and then to heal. I don't want people blaming themselves too, too much, like, and take that with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? Like you didn't create a monster, like whatever. Okay. But it definitely feels like there's some sort of responsibility here or feelings of responsibility here that are on your shoulders as the Empress in reverse, that's keeping you from moving forward, from moving on, all right? Let's get a little bit more on this, please. Okay. Okay. So at the bottom of the deck, we do have the Five of Pentacles. For the most part, this is coming from a place of feeling insecure and feeling left out in the cold, um, feeling unwanted, feeling unloved, and that is coming from a place from your past, potentially even your childhood, Six of Cups, right? And that's what's creating this situation in which somebody feels like they need to help someone else not feel that way, okay? I get that, but again, it's not your job to fix someone else. You have the High Priestess with the Four of Pentacles and the Seven of Cups. There is, there is very much a higher meaning behind all of this. It has very little, if nothing, to do with the other person. It has more to do with what's going on within you, the discrepancies within you. What's keeping you holding on to something for dear life because there's a lack of awareness emotionally. Four of Pentacles, Seven of Cups. There's confusion. There's all kinds of things. There's all kinds of... And the Seven of Cups could even represent all the different reasons or all the different ways you are holding yourself to this situation. Well, because there's this going on and there's that going on and there's this going on and that, this and that and this. It's like, no, 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 no. Clear away all the cobwebs. Clear away all the confusion. Clear away all the emotional things that need to be rep uh, recognized first 
so that you can then realize what really is going on here so you can let go. Okay, this is more about you. This has more to do with you than anyone else. Okay. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out where I want to go from here. I kind of want to get this Lenormand deck out. And I guess for... I guess for shits and giggles, let's look a little bit more into this energy. King of Pentacles, Knight of Cups in reverse. And then we can close out the reading with Oracle Guidance. And I actually want to go with one of the Goddess decks for that. All right, so let's look into this. And I'm not trying to be too nosy. Um, I just want to get into as much as, you know, I can in terms of the energies between the two of you, right? All right. Five shuffles. One. Two. Oh, wait. Hold on a second, you guys. Hold on. Okay. Sorry about that. So, um, let's start over. We're going to talk about the King of Pentacles and the Knight of Cups in reverse here. And I'm just going to get a little bit of clarification on... I want to say this person's state, but just whatever it is you need to know right now about the individual without looking like too deep into their psyche or like really trying to invade their privacy or anything like that. Yeah. Five shuffles. One. And we're using the Lenormand deck for this. This is two. Three. Four. And five. All right. So what's going on with this King of Pentacles, Knight of Cups in reverse? What do we need to know? That's very interesting. We got both of the women out here. So, what this is kind of telling me here is in some cases, shit, all right, uh, this is a general reading and I'm trying to keep it as general as possible, but what I just heard was in most, if not all cases, there is another woman. Um, I'm just going to I'm just going to say it the way I'm hearing it and you may be the mistress. What this feels like is someone recognizing a soulmate situation or having a soulmate bond, but this individual that is with the king as the, that is showing up as the king of pentacles knight of cups, um you may recognize that this individual is in a toxic relationship or is in a marriage that in which they're not happy or you're feeling this connection between the two of you and recognizing that you could have a relationship like this and you're trying to be the empress here you're trying to be the one that shows them what they really could have but ultimately they, it's not something that they want to see they would much rather stay in this state because also keep in mind the king of pentacles is a fixed energy right the king of pentacles can represent taurus for the most part if not um Virgo and Capricorn, and maybe you're dealing with a Taurus here, maybe, but ultimately what you're dealing with is someone that's very stuck and rooted in their situation. And you, as the Empress here, albeit in reverse, you as the Empress are recognizing the pain, the strife, the turmoil, the unrest that this person is in. But again, it's not your place to fix them. It's not your job to fix them. If they're going to fix anything, they need to fix it themselves. At the bottom of the Lenormand deck, you do have the Scythe. And then underneath that is the anchor. You need to cut away this damaging bond, is what I just wanted to say. You have to release yourself from being tied down or held down by this. Because ultimately, underneath the anchor are mice. 
ultimately, this is just going to create problems for you in the end. I mean, it's already created problems, but it's only going to, like, the, the, the mice here is a symbol of pestilence, pests, and situations that, if, ta if, if handled quickly enough, doesn't become a long-term problem. But if you allow it to just fester, it's only going to get worse, and then before you know it, you've got an even bigger problem than you started out with. And then underneath the mice is the lustful man that mirrors the lustful woman. But she, see, this one is in reverse. He's upright. This one is upright. In many cases, there is another woman and I, 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 or another individual. And I have trouble saying that because I'm not trying to throw that out here for people to just get panicked. I mean, if this resonates with your situation, then take it as it resonates. Okay. If not, then try and place it in your life as it fits. But I really, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to figure out how else this could play out or what else this could represent, and I'm just not seeing it, okay? So take it as it resonates for you. I'm not trying to create panic. I'm not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just take it as it resonates. This is a general reading. All right, we're going to close this out, and I do want to use this i'm being called to use the goddess guidance oracle cards okay for our closing message today so four shuffles oh, ooh, all right one closing oracle guidance please spirit this is two now also what i want to say is the scythe can also represent harvesting something and like I said, this situation is more has is better off. You're better off looking at this situation from a place of what is going on within me, not necessarily this other person. What's going on within me? And from that point of view, you do have something that you could harvest. Okay, let that marinate. This is three, and this is four. All right, closing Oracle Guidance for today's reading. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit, for today's reading. Wow, wow, okay. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, but you have Ain, A-I-N-E, leap of faith. Take a risk and put your heart's true desire into action. So what can I deduce without reading the card or reading from the book yet? What can I deduce from that? Take a risk and put your heart's true desires into action. So if you really want a good, solid relationship in which you are com you can communicate with, an, in, with the individual in which... Um, the energies are reciprocal, then what you need to do is, in fact, take this leap of faith, the fool, and leave the past behind or leave the situation behind. Because you're, no long, you're never going to be able to get what your heart truly desires if you're still allowing something that you don't desire to take that, to take that space energetically. If you really want what if you really want to receive that which you truly desire then you have to let go of everything that stands in the way of it which means not allowing yourself to be in this position of giving and over giving to an individual that's not reciprocating it and maybe they're just not ready to reciprocate that yet and maybe that could be the potential that you're seeing moving forward but the fact of the matter stands justice is served in looking at the situation as it is right now and saying, you're not available for this, I'm gonna go elsewhere. Because I deserve to have my love, my care, my attention reciprocated. All right, let's read this here. Venti cinco. Venti cinco, there we go, okay. The message from Ain is, procrastinating about your dreams won't make them go away. 
neither will it make them happen. Indecision is the death of the soul's burning passion to improve, grow, and learn. Don't worry about making a wrong decision. Instead, worry about making no decision at all. Then take time to pray, meditate, investigate, research, go on nature walks, and make your decision. Once made, the universal energies will immediately support your decision and doors will successfully, will successively open as if by magic. The magic you see is that you've set your mind to accomplish something. And this intention is what sets you on your magical journey. Trust that the universe will support you in all ways. Trust that your intention is clear and right for you. And then take a leap of faith and jump fully and squarely into the midst of putting your dreams into action. Don't hesitate or delay a moment longer. Various meanings of this card are, your dream will come true. Your chosen path is the right one for you. Heaven supports you fully on your mission. Your material needs will be taken care of. Take action steps towards the realization of your dream. Break your dream into achievable baby steps so that it's easier to start and keep going. Okay, so I pronounced this name wrong. This name is pronounced Aonya. Aonya. Okay. A, uh, Aonya is a powerful Celtic goddess and fairy queen who gave birth to incarnated fairies from her romances with mortal men. <laughs> That's funny. Aonya. Anya is reversed in Ireland, oh, I'm sorry, is revered in Ireland for helping to grow crops and oversee animals. You can call upon Anya when you need additional guidance and the courage to take risks, but also crops. There's something harvestable about this situation. Take it slowly, but take it fully. Yes? All right, guys, so there you have it. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. It is so glad, I'm so happy, I'm so glad, and it's so great to be back here with you all for these Morning Coffee Daily Readings. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>